Over 50 years ago, we were members and had a chalet at Blue Mountain. And uh, one morning when I was in the lineup, uh, this young man came through the lineup over at Blue Mountain and was trying to get people over to his brand new ski area called Georgian Peaks. Well, there's, there's got to be a bigger and better hill than this in this great big province of ours. A lot of them, a lot of those guys who had shacks over at the bottom of Blue Mountain, a lot of them built chalets over here. We would sell memberships as members of the club and make it into a private club. And at, at that point, of course, uh, clubs were, ski clubs were not a usual thing. It's probably been many years since they've talked. They certainly both are pretty good with their memories, so it'll be really neat to, to, to watch a little bit of history unfold. Wow. Hi, Karen. Hi, Jack. Hi, Judy. This is great. Wonderful to see you all. How old are you now, Buck? 93. Oh, boy. That's great. This is fun to reminisce about the early days of of uh, Georgian Peaks and it, it's great. I remember racing there in 1968 with all the, the serious races that were being put on there. Uh, it, it certainly put Southern Ontario in the big leagues. Well, that's what we, what, what I thought we might have to, we could get, get a, a more left at the top and do, do what they did at Beaver Creek, put a, a starting ramp so it's none of my business anymore. I just, I just talk. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is still your business because your heart is still there. <laughs> Think about the, the aspirations and the goals you had with Georgian Peaks and, and you know, bringing Hans in and then having that professional Beehive race series and Canadian championships and. Well, we we we're lucky in a lot of ways because it, it has worked out well. Beehive uh, International Invitational 1961. It was the creme de la creme of international ski racers. This was, to my knowledge, the first professional race, certainly in North America. We, we had you know, the best skiers of the world came, came into it. Uh, Stein Erickson, who, who was absolutely number one in the world at that time. And all these wonderful European stars were here. It was pretty special. It was very, very special, yeah. A lot of the success of Peak's kids was thanks to Hans Wieland, and Hans was a very good coach. The biggest thing I remember with my dad is his genuine passion for uh, the sport of skiing. He absolutely loved it. It was, it was in his blood and his DNA. His philosophy, and I remember he, he spoke to me about this a, a few times, but he said, you know, I don't need great skiers in the ski school. I need great teachers. And uh, Hans Willen was a great instructor. He he was a big plus. You know, one of the one of the great things about um, Georgian Peaks, but all the clubs in the escarpment, is the great rivalry between the different clubs. That's that's important. That's what's built the 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 competitive. That's why it's still going strong today because the clubs compete against each other. And like Al said, the escarpment, Collingwood, has the best horizontal vertical in the world. The way <laughs> it's developed and how many, much great skiing there is there, all those, all, all the hills in, on the escarpment, I mean, they turn out really well. You can find challenge for whatever you want to do. And 
great place to learn to ski, perfect for families. It is important to remember where our roots are. The interesting thing, Nancy Green Ski League wasn't all about winning, it was about participation and getting us involved. It was competitive, but in a fun way. Everyone was included, all the young and ones who were, you know, not great ski racers were racing Nancy Green. Loving the weekends because of that. Yeah. I think my dad would say, you know, two things about uh, ski racing at Georgian, Georgian Peaks. One, uh, he would say, you know, we have the right terrain. We have a terrain advantage at Georgian Peaks, which really is is foundational. But that that doesn't, you know, build the skiers that we built without the great programming and and the uh, the incredible coaching here at at Georgian Peaks. And I think that is a value at this club that was built on from the very beginning. The terrain provides the uh, requirement for you to be pretty good skier at the end of the day. If you can ski here, you can you can travel the world and ski anywhere. Made people think that this this is if they could do this, they could do anything. Which is true, you know. Pr proud of it, you know, it was it was a good concept. I think it's gonna get better too. When you decide to volunteer at this club in any capacity. I think that there's a history of people having done such a good job that it makes you want to be your very best. It's part of, I think, our uh, success formula. I think the people that were, race were running the racing program were so enthusiastic. It just naturally caught on to our children and to the parents, awakening a competitive spirit in, in a lot of the racers help our kids uh, when they get into the starting gate and the World Cup that they have nothing left to think about but to you know go for it. I'm hoping that this might stimulate some people to action, to join, because life inside the fences is pretty cool. We volunteers get more out of it than just don't understand how wonderful it is to be able to volunteer and help out. Otherwise there would be no racing. First of all, super excited to be on this call with, you know, with Nancy and Jack and, and watching him as he, you know, went from a Peaks uh, grizzly bear right up to uh, winning a, a medal at the Olympics. Absolutely amazing. And then to Buck, thank you very much for laying down the groundwork and, and doing everything and, and having the vision to see this amazing mountain that creates such amazing athletes. So thank you. Thank you very much, Buck. Well, I just I just want to say thank you for kind of laying the groundworks for for myself. Uh, pretty much everything that I've I've done this past season and, and leading up to it is thanks to all of you. So uh, there's not much more I can do but say thank you. I've traveled to a lot of different places to ski and moved around a lot in my life. But the constant that has stayed is Georgian Peaks. You are home and will always be home for me. And I want to tell you a story to exemplify exactly how important the Peaks has been in my life, and that's a story of how I got my name. My parents loved to ski at the Peaks, and so when my mom was pregnant, she pictured her little girl racing so aggressively down Rogers Run that no one could tell if I was a boy or a girl. And so they chose a unisex name, which happened to be Aaron. And I think this perfectly shows how important the Peaks has been to four generations of my family. You've really made us fall in love with the sport, from racing to skiing around, and that started with my grandpa, who was my greatest hero. And so I wanted to send a huge thank you to Buck and to everyone at the Peaks for really making me into who I am today, for developing that love of skiing, which hopefully floats down into future generations, and for allowing me to travel across a globe representing Canada and to four Olympic Games. 
Thank you for all that you've done, for giving me my name, and for making the Peaks home for so many of us. Thank you. One of my fondest memories of Buck is when I just got back from the Sochi Olympics and I was feeling a little bit down about my result and a bit bummed and he was <laughs> sitting in the bar on the bleachers and I came and sat next to him and he told me about how he'd set an alarm to watch my race when, you know, it was four o'clock in the morning. And that was the moment I think I realized that it was bigger than me. It was my Olympic performance was bigger than me. I thought if someone who created such a amazing club <laughs> with such a legacy and such integrity and such community was watching me in the middle of the night do my thing, then I could sure put a smile on. So I think I feel and we feel lucky to be part of a club and a community that was um, so much a result of Buck's passion for putting two boards on your feet and sliding down the hill. Hey Buck, the youngest of the Stemmels here, Brian. And just want to say a big thanks to you for creating such a vision at Georgian Peaks. And I know when my parents, Wilf and Andrea, joined there in the 1960s, they just adored the place. And we were lucky enough to share some of that passion with them. And my sister Karen and I are thankful uh, we had so many runs, maybe millions up and down Rogers. And uh, it was just a thrill being there all the time, skiing with our friends and family. And now our kids get to do it too. And hopefully they have a million runs up and down Rogers. Uh, I can't even get a parking spot named after me, but uh, we'll talk about that later. But thanks to you in creating Georgia Peaks, Rogers Run, all the Stemmels, thank you a million. The best memories uh, growing up at Georgian Peaks. Um, I have photos of me when I was, you know, I think I was walking at nine months and uh, my parents were ski instructors. So I have photos uh, going up the old rope toe at Georgian Peaks. So thank you, Buck, for starting it all. I certainly look back, as Jeff Hendry does, on my time as a Peaks racer uh, and as a Nancy Greener, uh, and it was uh, pivotal in life. You know, uh, Dad was a hockey player. Thank God Buck got us into skiing. <laughs>